Okay. And remember. All right, so what I want to do is I just want to run through finding random numbers on your calculator for you. I also want to remind you that this paper that we're doing will be much like the other one in that it's open book and you will be using your, your computer. So you can also, instead of using your calculator to generate random numbers, <coughs> you could use, the cal you could use the, your laptop to do it as well, right? And so we'll look, at how to, we'll look at how to do that because there's a random number generator on the, on the computer that's far superior than the one at a time on your calculator. But you still need to be able to do the one on your calculator, all right? So, hold on. Let's, so we're going to go through. So, oh, did you? remember, to get random numbers on your calculator. Wait, are you recording? Yes, I am. First, run. Remember, that's just go to the menu, and it's the first option, right? Second, you have to push execute to start it. Yeah? What's next? Options. Options. There you go. Excellent. Options. It's at near the top, right under the F keys. Yeah, next, okay. What's next after options? F6, is, which is just the directional arrow that just keeps, allows you to move to see the more options, right? So F6, which again is just an arrow, just to, just to move the, to the next screen, okay? Then what? F3. Right, for prob probability, which is F3, yeah? Good, then what? F4, which, that, which is which, what thing? Random, right? But pick, pick the, all right, it's just that we haven't gotten to that part yet then, all right, okay, so random, which is F4, and then the last thing, right, F1 or F2, I'd prefer that you use F2, the, the one that I, says INT, that's F2. And then all you have to do is push execute to get, oh, wait a minute. No, we didn't put the parameters in. I'm sorry. It's going to ask you for parameters, right? So you'll tell it, it'll come up with a screen, right? Saying random number and then have an open parentheses. Yes? you're gonna put in how many you want. So if I, put, if I want six random numbers, what will I type in there? One, comma, six, close the bracket. Okay? If I, right, that's, that's to get six random numbers. What if I wanted 10, what would I put in there? Exactly, one, comma, 10, close the bracket. What if I wanted 100 of them? One comma 100, right? Just depending on how many numbers you need. And we're gonna, re and we're gonna go back over how to determine how many numbers you need as well. And then all you need to do is push Okay, I don't know what I'm, what's just happened. Okay, sorry. Okay, and then you just simply push the number again and again, push execute again and again. Oh, my pencil must have died. Yep, all right, then you just push execute, 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 execute to get random number after random number. Now. You must know how to do it on your calculator so that you can explain if you're going to use your calculator as a, right? You need to be able to explain those steps to be able to, uh, to do one of the steps that we're going to work on today in the, in the, in the lesson, right? Now, pardon me? Uh, yeah, you have to give me just a second because my pencil died. So, okay. They're also in your, they're in your book on page 15.
and then you can and you can write notes on the on the fat area if you need some clarification for those. Okay. So page fifteen tells you how to do it. Now they're showing you that you're getting decimal number decimals. Um, that's if you had an older calculator, so don't worry about it. You're not going to get those decimals. It's gonna, just going to give you whole, whole numbers between the numbers you had for your, the ones you have, calculators you have. Okay? All right. So today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about using it, but using your random generator to be able to go through part of the process of performing a simulation, okay? So let's talk, let's just go to this page. We're on page, what is that, 17, I think. Yep, it's page 17 in your book. And so we're gonna talk about each piece. We talked yesterday about how you would decide how many numbers to use. If your probability, guys, if your probability is given to you in tenths, then how many numbers do you need? 10. If it's given to you in hundredths, how many numbers do you need? 100. If there's six questions on a six possible question answers on a test, then you need how many numbers? Six, right? So, and you can use different processes for determine for to do the simulation depending on how many numbers you have. If you have only have six, you could use what to do a simulation? Some of you were here using a die, right? Exactly, because it has six numbers on it. If you have fifty numbers to use, you could use what? deck of cards maybe yeah so you can use a deck of cards because it has 52 cards so there are lots of ways to be able to do simulations other than the calculator you will probably focus more on using your calculator and again the random number generator that we're going to explore on the computer which is um, much more efficient now whichever method you do though you're going to have to go through the process of explaining what you did to get your random numbers and filling out the chart that will tell you what those random numbers mean. So we're gonna do number one together. Now notice I've written in problem, model, and key components. That's, um, that's some NCA language you'll, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with as we go. So somebody who knows nothing about the topic guesses multiple choice question, answers in a 14 question test where there are six possibilities for each question. How many possibilities? Six, which indicates that I could use a die, right? Or I could use random numbers from my calculator, anything you want to. Only one answer to each question is correct. You're interested in finding out how many questions they're likely to answer correctly and the probability that this person will get five or more correct answers. Okay? So, go to our steps. Now, if you look at the steps... The first thing it says, the step we want to do first is to determine the probabilities. Well, you're either going to, for your problem, if you're picking a question on a test, it's either going to be right, what? Right or wrong or correct or incorrect, right? How many possibilities is that? Two, right? So, but, so for our probability that you're going to, and how many of them are right? Out of how many? Six. Well, be careful. Six questions on each test, right? It says there are six. Here we go. Six possibilities for each question. Only one is correct. Right? So that gives us the probability. So look again at the first, the first step. Step one is always just to list the probabilities. Okay? And add them together. So the probabilities, yes, yes, the probabilities are one of the six is going to be correct, yeah? Which means that how many of them are not going to be correct? Five of the six are not correct. And one six plus five six add together to make what? Oh, be careful. One. And they have to add together to equal one. Okay, so these prob that prob particular probability is easier to do as a fraction than a decimal. It makes no difference to your work. So, okay, so step one is just to list the probabilities. The probabilities are one in six that you're going to get a correct, plus five out, of, five out of six that are going to be wrong, equals one. Next, the next thing we're going to do is we need to model what we're going to do. 
our probabilities. Okay, when I pull this, it's going to take that off, so, but that's all right because I'm not going to have enough room to write it all anyway on my little lines there. So the step two is the device you're going to use. So if you have six, I could say the device I'm going to use is a die. The device I'm going to use is my graphics calculator. Whatever you're going to use to generate this, the random numbers that allow you to do this simulation. Okay? If it's very small numbers, you might want to use a die. So let's just, uh, but doesn't matter. You're probably going to use what? Your calculator. Okay? So that's step two. What are you going to use to create the simulation? Okay? Really difficult so far? All right. Now, then step three, it talks about the process. You have to decide what you're going to do to be able to get, to, to get the numbers you need. So this is how I use my calculator. I'll use my calculator with the formula random times 10 plus one, but that's if you're using a scientific calculator. Is that what you're using? No, so you're gonna have a different one. So you're gonna, you're gonna say, I will use the random number generator on my calculator, right? Don't worry about ignoring the digits after the decimal point because you're not gonna have any. And to, you're gonna use it to produce random numbers from one to 10. The problem, I'm sorry, from one to what in this case, not 10, one to six, thank you, all right? The probability of getting each of the numbers one to 10 is not one-tenth, like this, what is the probability for getting each of, the, each of the numbers? One in what? Six, one-sixth, okay? So you would write that you're gonna use your calculator to be able to, get the, to generate random numbers, one through six, and the probability of getting one of those numbers is one in six. And you don't have to change it to a decimal like they've done, they did it just because it's tens, okay? Now, step four, and that you're always going to have to do is you're going to fill out this small chart. Notice that your outcomes in this case have already been filled in for you, but that's not always the case. You notice the outcomes are either you get a correct answer or what? Right, or an incorrect answer, okay? So you can either get a correct answer or an incorrect answer, right? Normally, you will have to fill those in. And we'll look at one where you have to fill it in. What is the probability of a correct answer? One out of six. One out of six, right? So they've already filled that in for you. They said then, if you get the random number one, then you conclude that that one corresponds to a correct answer, right? How many, what's the probability for an incorrect answer? Five out of six. So what numbers would correspond to an incorrect answer then? Two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five, and six, six right? And make sure you count them up and that they add up to make the five out of six, right? And so anytime, if I, got a, if I push the random number generator and got a four, then what can I conclude? That's a wrong answer, right? And so you're going to just keep pushing random numbers until you get a correct answer, which that's one and that's a trial. But we're not do dealing with that right now. All we're talking about right now is just setting these up. So that's all you're gonna be responsible for right now in this homework lesson is just being able to set them up, okay? So let's look at another one. We'll do another one together and then you're on your own. So this one has, is handy because it just happens to be there and it has all the pieces missing. So. A farmer has a flock of nine nanny goats and estimates the following probability. I don't know, see, apparently this is the goat book for sure. So, probability that a nanny goat produces a single kid, where a kid it simply means a what? Baby goat, Baby goat. there you go, is 0 0.2. In other words, two tenths, right? Good. Probability that she produces twins is 0 0.5 or five tenths. Probability an antigoat produces triplets is 0 0.3 or three, what? Yeah. Tenths. So they gave you all the probabilities. So step one is just to tell us what those probabilities are. One. So probabilities equal 0 0.2 plus 0 0.5 
plus 0 0.3. 5 and 3 are 8, plus 2 more makes 10, so 10 tenths is 1. Right? So that's your first step, is simply to add the, all the probabilities together and make sure they have to equal what number? 1. Because you're not always going to be given the probabilities. Usually you have to, some, many times you have to figure out the probabilities. Um, probably not in this simulation. Okay, step two. We have to determine what we're going to use. Could I use a die for this one? No, because it's in tenths. That means I've got to have at least how many numbers? Ten. Ten numbers, and a die doesn't have enough, does it? Could I use a pair of dice? Sure, but then I would have to have numbers that I ignore. Right? Which makes it more complicated. So what's the easiest thing to use? All right. So we'll just use our calculator. And step three is simply dec decide deciding what numbers, the cal how to do the process. So the steps, you're just going to write in the steps for using your calculator. Right? Random number generator. Generate numbers what? One through... 10, because I want 10 of them, right? You're going to push execute over to get each number, blah, 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 right? And again, I'm going to show you, before this lesson is done, I wanna, I'm going to show you the random number generator on the computer so that you can look at that one because you're going to be very happy with what it can do for you, all right? Yes? Okay. Probability the flock produces at least 20 kids. Okay. Well, the probabilities aren't going to change yet. So let's see. The number, and then we're going to put the number of kids. Hold on, just it. You're going to. That's what you're going to build up to, right? But that, so that's that's going to be that's going to come later when you're actually doing your trials. That's what you want to do. You want to keep pushing numbers until you can get a total of 20 kids. Because remember. You, the number of kids is what the probability is. So what's the prob for a probability for 0 0.2 is that they produce a single kid. So what's that mean? How many? One, right? The probability for the second one is if they do twins, which is how many kids? Two. And the next one is if they produce triplets, which means how many kids? Three. So you're just going to keep pushing numbers until you get, you know, like, so, you, so I might get a three, then a three, then a two, then a one, then a three. And they, you're going to keep pushing numbers until they add up to... 20 or more, or more, right? Yeah, and we'll do that part later. Okay, put in the correct probabilities for each one. That's just list them, right? And now I need to assign numbers, okay? So if it's two tenths, how many numbers do I need? Two, and so what logically would be good for that? One and two. For, for the next one, I need the next five numbers, so three, four, five, six, and seven, right? And finally, the last one, I just need the last three numbers, so eight, nine, and 10. So that means that if I push the random number generator and got a 10, how many baby goats did I just have? Three. Three, right? If I pushed it again and I got a four, how many baby goats did I just have? Two. Pushed it and got a one, then I got one more. Pushed it and got another one, and I got one more, right? So it's not the numbers that you're getting. It's not these numbers that you are the, not the numbers of goats you get. It's the number you, that number corresponds to these numbers, right? So you always have to do it. And uh, it has kids there, so I, you could just put the number. If you didn't have kids there, if, it just said that it, you need, if you didn't define it, then you'd have to put one kid, two kids, three kids. But if you're very specific here, which you will have to write your own definitions on some of them, then you can just you put the numbers there, okay? But you have to be specific about what kinds of things you're measuring. How does it look? Think you can handle it? Okay. Now, I really want you to go through the keystrokes on the, on the calculator and describe them here as you go to get used to it so that you can do them. All right? Yes. This Your keys. Question. Mining calculator has very different keys.
keystrokes. Well, you write down the ones for you then. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll just make sure to take note of it before we grade it. Okay. All right. Okay. On your, but remember that when you're doing these and when you're, when you're doing your paper, you're going to have access to your laptop. And so you can use the laptop to generate your random numbers. And you can use another one. Random.org is just a good one because it's nice and easy to memorize. Random.org, how easy could that be? And it's also very easy to use because it gives you the minimum number you want, the maximum number you want, and then you can generate it, okay? So for this particular one, we were doing 10, right? 10 for the goats, boom. Then it generates an, a random number. It's probably easier to describe doing this as well, okay? Now, there are other random number generators that I'll introduce you to as we go, and there's even some that will do many, many trials, but since we haven't talked about trials yet, I don't want to get, I don't want to get that, far, that far ahead, but you can, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not, it's not showing you what I'm doing yet. So it's random.org. Just put in your minimum number and your maximum number, and then hit generate. Can't you okay. Just put number generated into yes, you can. But I'm just I'm just showing you. Yeah, I'm just showing you one. This would be probably the first one that comes up. But yeah, I'm just showing you one of them. So random.org is just one of them. That's very good and super easy to use. I mean, just dead easy to use. And you want it to be easy to use because look at this. Here, my, I would say, I'm going to use my laptop in random.org as step two. And then it would, I would say, type one into the minimum number, type 10 into the maximum number, hit generate. Is that a little easier than all the stuff you have to go through on your calculator? <laughs> all right. And would you rather write that three little steps or would you rather write the, what was it, nine steps that your calculator takes? Okay. And again, there are other random number generators, and we'll talk about them as we go, because later we're going to want to be able to do, we want to generate a series of random numbers, which your calculator cannot do, but your laptop can. And so we'll talk about how to generate a whole series, but not until we've, we talk about why and, what, and what, they're, what they're used for. Okay? All right. So your homework today is page 17 through 20, just going through the simulation process and going through those four steps. First, listing the probabilities and adding them up, making sure they add to one. one. Good. Then second, telling what you're going to use, random.org or the calculator. I don't care what you use, but just do a random number. Then step three, talk about the, how you're going to generate the random numbers, right? And it has to be clear enough so that someone who doesn't know how it's done could read it and do it, okay? So don't you cannot assume that the person knows what random.org is. You cannot assume that they know that to put in the minimum number of whatever and the maximum number of whatever. You have to describe the process. Otherwise, you will not achieve on this, okay? Now, then... Of course, tell it to push gen generate, to, and it will give you your random number. Then you're going to have to fill out your chart. And if you look, um, oh, they're pretty nice to you. They only give you one of these? Oh, no, you got two of them. So one of them, they give you a chart. Uh, then, but the, the last one, they give you the outline of a chart, but you have to put in all the categories and how many separations you need, et cetera. Okay? All right, so let's get going then.